All right. Welcome, dear passengers of the Plato Airline, to Drandian's first YouTube video. Uh, the first YouTube special video. I've done some videos for YouTube. Uh, we don't care about the character we take. Uh, we're gonna be doing a series over the stuff that I consider a must to know uh, when you're playing Brotato from Danger 1 to Danger 0 and up to Danger 5. And on the first video, we're gonna be talking about stats. On the second ones, I'm gonna go over uh, probably characters or weapons, but let's see what happens. Just gonna randomly grab one of these. We don't care about it. <laughs> it this character doesn't do melee damage, but well, I, it, I don't care about it. Okay, uh, let's get over the matter. Uh, for stats, we have primary and secondary stats. And we're gonna be just going over all of them and how their mechanics work for the sake of experiment and we are just gonna talk about danger 5 but if you know what to do on danger 5 you can basically beat all the game on any danger so the things that you learn here are usable for all danger levels HP is your health point and if it drops to zero you basically die very simple very very straightforward on wave 1 to wave 9 I don't really care about how much HP I have but I I probably get at least 20 HP to begin with and you don't need to spend that many uh, skills or coins on it because each time you level up you get one HP upgrade and aside from that uh, I prefer to have 20 HP at least till wave 9 and till our first horde wave or especially, especially if we get a wave 11 uh, boss wave I prefer to have 40 HP minimum because uh, it makes you get three hits from the bosses so you have enough time to attack you have enough time to uh, strategize your movement and so on the second one is HP regeneration HP regeneration is how much HP you regain and regenerate over time over a matter of a second or more or less uh, you can be both positive and negative on the HP regeneration if you go negative on HP regen you do not lose HP over time so if you don't want to play an HP regen character you can just go minus 100 why not nobody cares but it's preferred to have at least one one point in HP regen in even if you're not gonna play HP regen because one point in HP regen will give you 0.2 HP regeneration per second which makes you heal 1 HP per 5 seconds. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. Even if you are not playing HP region, have at least some point in it. Uh, life steal. The more damage you deal, the more damage you life steal. You can bo go both positive and negative on it. Negative life steal does not um, affect any mechanics in the game. So you can just go 100 minus life steal. It's just gonna take away your life steal from the items or weapons that you are picking. Uh, but I prefer to have at least 10 to 15 percent lifesteal on all of my characters if they can lifesteal of course and uh, I don't really take it till wave let's say 9 unless I see like I don't need other stats so t uh, have in mind to have at least 5 percent of lifesteal before getting to the wave 12 or 11 boss uh, damage percentage you can again go both positive and negative on it uh, But preferably if you're not playing a character uh, That doesn't care engineering characters Let's say if you're not playing an engineering character you should care about your uh, damage multiplier damage multiplier increases the damage of your weapon the damage you deal with most items like let's see do we get something like that yeah sacro sausage for example uh, damage percentage increases your damage one of your weapon and also decreases the damage of your weapon based on how many percentages are you missing or you're adding it also uh, adds to the damage of items like sacro sausage for example, if you have, uh, let's say, 100% attack damage, the Sacred Sausage were going to do 2 damage 3 times with a 25% chance. So not only it affects your weapon, it affects your skills and also your class activity. Like uh, there are some characters, let's say for example, uh, this character. 
Lich. So Lich, 100% chance to deal 10 damage, which is based on your HP to a random enemy when you heal. So, yeah. If you have, let's say, 100% uh, damage percent, this 10 damage, even though it is based on your HP, it's going to be 20 damage. So keep that in mind. <coughs> Sorry. Um, even if you're not going to take any damage percentage, try to have it at least at neutral. Even negative 1 damage, it's, it's one of the biggest changes. Negative 1% damage will reduce the damage of your gun by 1. It's such a weird like interaction with the weapon and this just 1%. Uh, melee damage, range damage, and elemental damage. These are raw damage types. Uh, they directly affect only and only the damage you deal with your uh, weapon in hand. For example, Taser is based on elemental damage. These SMGs are based on range damage. Let's see, stick for example is based on your melee damage if you can, as you can see here. The way that these stats interact with your damage percentage is this way. When I have let's say one range damage, this two range damage let's say. If I have two range damage, it's going to add one damage to my SMG because SMG only uses 50% of my range damage. So that's going to add up to this. This is going to become four damage instead of three. Then this is multiplied by your damage percentage. So if I have, let's say, 50% damage and 2 range damage, my damage of SMG will go from 4 damage to 6 damage because first your raw damage is added to the weapon and then your damage percentage is added and multiplied to the damage that your weapon is doing as a whole. Uh, you have to just do the quick math based on your character's skills and its positives and negatives. Uh, you can both go negative and positive on them, and if you go negative on them, they will reduce the damage of the weapon that you're taking. But for example, let's say you're playing a melee weapon, and you can just check it here. For example, if you look here, uh, stick is a melee weapon, SMG is a ranged weapon. Uh, if you reduce melee damage, SMG will not lose damage. So if there is an item that reduces your, let's say, melee damage but not to your range damage, you can still take it because you're gonna get the damage for your weapon and you're not gonna be losing anything important. Attack speed uh, says how fast or slower your weapons will be doing attacks. Uh, so you can go both positive and negative on it. If you go negative, you're gonna attack slower. If you go positive, you're gonna attack uh, much with a less cooldown, let's say. So, for example, the cooldown of SMG as a base weapon is 0.17. Uh, when you get 5 to 10% attack speed, the SMG's cooldown will go to 1.14, I think. And it, there, it's mostly based on the type of weapons that you have. We don't have to talk about weapons that much, but I'm just gonna go over some weapons that are very much affected by the whole... Let me check which character, which character. Yeah, generalist is good. <coughs> so, as you can see, we have uh, two types of, let's say, uh, weapons based on attack speed. There is high rate of fire, low cooldown uh, items or weapons like SMGs. Uh, items like SMG minigun do not benefit from attack speed that much, but it is preferred, for example, on SMG, I prefer to have 5 to 15% attack speed, at least a minimum. Then, uh, instead of uh, focusing on attack speed, I add to my range damage and my damage percentage instead of give, giving it attack speed. But on slow weapons, such as double barrel shotgun, which has a cooldown of 1.337, or let's say specifically like laser gun that has 2.15 seconds cooldown, and you see, laser gun has a damage of 40 and it takes 400% of your range damage. So instead of buying range damage for this uh, weapon, if you just increase your attack speed, let's say by 50%, and it takes a cooldown of your gun to 1.2, 1.3 seconds, you're gonna do much, much more damage than just increasing the damage alone. And it's gonna help you clear the horde waves much easier. And there are also weapons like a revolver. Revolver is a very special weapon. For example, when you increase your attack speed on revolver, not only it shoots faster, 
it will also reload faster. So if you have, let's say, 50% attack speed increase, this is going to be probably 2.2. And this is going to go down to 2.2, 2.4 as well. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm just doing like uh, exemplified maps, math. It's not <laughs> like genuinely it's going to do that, but that's what attack speed does in general. Uh, next one is crit chance. Crit chance you can go both positive and negative on it. Uh, if you go positive on it, there is a chance that you're gonna do critical hits, which is, for example, written on each weapon exclusively. For example, SMG has a base of 1% chance to do 1.5 times your weapon damage. Then, if you look at stick, stick has 3% base chance to do 2 times your weapon's damage. If you increase your crit chance, this chance to do the 2 times or uh, 1.5 time on SMG will increase. But, let's say you went minus 10% crit chance. What will happen, you may ask? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing will happen. Only and only thing that happens when you have, let's say, 100 negative percent in crit chance is that you're gonna lose the space. And your weapon is always gonna do its normal damage, which is 3 for now. So don't worry about getting cr no crit, it's not a big deal. If your build or weapon doesn't need it, you don't need it. You can go negative on it. Engineering is a very special uh, stat. Uh, it increases the damage you do with your structures. And structures are so said landmines. I don't know, uh, for example, torrents, incendiary torrents and everything else. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily affect other things. It also increases the damage of your um, damage of your, for example, planks. There is only one weapon that really uses the that as a damage source, and it's the plank. Uh, this item. So if you have engineering, it's gonna add to the damage of your plank, and that's it. It basically just increases your damage on your uh, engineering stuff. You can go negative on it as much as you want if you're playing any of these weapons, uh, melee or ranged or elemental, it doesn't affect anything. Range um, gives you more reach on your melee weapons and your ranged weapons. There is one and only one thing you should know about range and it, sh it is that uh, range affects, um, let's say, ranged weapons on a 100% scale, so if I lose 200 range, my SMG will only have 200 range, but if I lose 200 range on a melee weapon, melee weapons only benefit 50% of the range that you're taking. So this stick, instead of 175, if I go negative 200 on range, this is gonna go down just by 100, per 100 range, and it's gonna be 75 range. Uh... The next stat we have is armor. Armor just reduces or increases the damage you take per attack. For wave 0 to 9, I prefer to have at least 5 or 6 armor before I reach the first boss. And I never go negative on it unless like my character doesn't care about it. For example, there are characters like Ghost. Ghost has negative 100 armor, but there's a way for playing it. I'm gonna show it to you in another video. That's not necessarily the matter here and uh, dodge tells you how much chance you have in order to evade an attack that a boss or a bullet or a mob does to you you can go both positive and negative over it if you go negative on dodge nothing happens like you don't get hit twice you can only go positive on dodge and if you go positive and have 60 percent dodge uh, which I specifically, specifically recommend of having on all of your melee builds. I prefer to have at least 30% dodge till let's say mid game. And at the end game I prefer to have always 60% dodge because on wave 16, let's say, uh, there are a lot of bullets. Whatever you do, you cannot kill all of the mobs with your melee weapons on those waves, so there will always be bullets everywhere. And you're not a dodge god, I'm not a dodge god, we don't have the reaction time to dodge everything in this game specifically. So always have dodge when you're playing melee weapons. Unless your character doesn't let you. Speed defines how fast or slower your character moves. I prefer to have 5-15% to at least a minimum of it 
kill I reach the boss wave or I prefer to have at least 5% speed till wave 9 especially especially on melee weapons because it makes you go faster than all of the mobs so till wave 9 at least buy one snail to slow down your enemies or at least have 5% so you can get out of uh, some sticky situations luck increases the chance of you getting better items in the shop it also decreases your chance to get items in the shop and better skills like you can get both uh, level 1, level 2, level 3 and level 4 skills but luck is a very 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 let's say vaguely effective uh, stat I prefer to have at least a minimum of 30 luck before going to wave 12 and 13 so at least I get one legendary or one level 3 purple item because it makes the game a lot easier for just a little bit it also uh, increases your chance of getting fruits from your uh, enemies that you're killing for example let's get 5 luck okay and it also increases the chance of you getting crates out of <laughs> even some random mobs and trees so it's very weird you can go even minus 50 on luck and still get a legendary in the shop but the chances are very low i prefer to have at least five luck till wave 10 and after wave 10 i usually if i want to be lucky i get like 30 to 50 points in luck before wave 18 so i can buy some purple items and upgrade my character pretty well harvesting gives you one coin per harvesting and it increases in natu natural natural uh, let's say circumstances by 5% for example let's say if you have 100 harvesting at the end of each wave you're gonna get 100 harvesting so 100 coins but if you finish the wave you're gonna have 100 coins and 105 harvesting and if you go next wave then you're gonna get 105 coins and then 105 multiplied by 0, 0, 0 0.05 so you're gonna have more and more and more and more harvesting and more and more coins uh, indefinitely up until wave 20 but if you want to play endless that's a whole new story let's say and for the secondaries let's get over them consumable heal uh, increases your healing from both fruits and crates and decreasing it also you can decrease it by a maximum of two after two you just heal one hp there are items like this alien worm that decrease it and items like weird fruit that will increase it i don't think i will ever get that item here but let's see none of these well and uh, material healing there is only one specific item called the cute monkey that gives you materials healing so there's an 8% chance per cute of monkey to heal when you pick up materials and that's it. That's a very low chance. I usually do not take cute monkeys unless it's free. XP gain defines how faster or slower your character uh, gains XP and levels up. And leveling up is pretty good because each time you level up it's basically buying skills, getting stats for free just for killing mobs and earning coins. Also, you have to bear in mind that the coins that you earn with harvesting also give you XP. So let's say if you're playing harvester or any uh, harvesting on any character, let's say you're playing uh, you're playing entrepreneur, which has 50% increase in harvesting, or you're playing farmer that gets uh, more harvesting each time it grabs a fruit and has 3% chance. If you get some XP extra or xp modifications on them these characters become really powerful because each time you earn coins with your harvesting your character will also gain xp so bear that in mind at all times pickup range defines how far away from you you can grab materials and crates and um, uh, let's say fruits so pickup range i usually don't take pickup range uh, unless I have like I'm playing a character like our little buddy here called the gluten I, I play usually pruner on gluten for example I take at least 30% uh, pickup range on him so I can grab the fruits from afar or crates and one heal myself and explode 
So if you're playing melee characters, you can take some pickup range, but don't overdo it. You don't really need it unless you're based on consumable heals. There are only two characters that I really take pickup range on. One is Gluten and number two is Chunky because I play Chunky with the Choppers. There's a video for both of them on the YouTube channel. You can watch them later. And less item prices. Uh, for example, if you get coupon, there's only one item. You cannot like increase it. Uh, you, you can only like gain item discounts by this. There's only one item called the coupon. And if you get the coupon, each time you take coupon, these stuff on the shop will cost you 5% less coins. And that's it. Explosion damage, explosion types. There are some specific weapons in the game. For example, number one, let's say Shredder. Uh, the mines from Screwdriver or Plank, these have a chance to do explosion, explosion. And that explosion damage affects these weapons only and only. And there are items called like uh, Repentir that they also gain from explosions. Like this. This Repentir, enemies have 20% chance to explode for 10 damage, which is 50% of your damage when they die. So if you take the item Dynamite, which increases your chance of exploding, that item will give you more damage. Uh, there should be another one here. Let me see. Can I find it? Can I find it? Yeah, for example, Plasma Hammer does uh, explosion damage as well. Also, Nuke Gun. Uh, just read the tooltips. If you read the tooltips and says say and see, just explodes. That means that you're gonna benefit from explosions, and that's basically it. And this dynamite is the only item that increases your uh, explosion damage. And the next stat is just explosion size. Explosion size just increases it or decreases how big your booms are, and that's it. Uh, bounce. Uh, there are two types of weapon. Number one is the piercing weapons. Number two is bouncing weapons. Uh, piercing weapons are such as SMG. For example, if you look at SMG, it says piercing one. So it means when I shoot my pistol, like this, it's gonna both hit the first target and one target behind it, but with 50% damage reduction on the second hit. So you see, the first one did 12, the second one did 6. Here, 12, 6. That's pierced. These are pierce type weapons, but there are also other weapons such as slingshots. And um, there you are. Uh, for example, slingshot is a bounce type. And uh, bounce types are basically when you hit a target, for example, bam, bam, your just shots will go to another target. For example, let's show you the bounce. This is bounce. The slingshot just hits them, then that bounces to another one. Uh, there are a couple of uh, weapons that have bounce on them. Number one is slingshot, number two is uh, let's say shuriken and these are basically the only weapons that are bounce based. So uh, for shuriken just get crit chance but if you're playing uh, let's say uh, one armed and you wanna play slingshot which I always play him slingshot when I wanna clear with danger 5 with him uh, you use bounce and I have specific builds for him for the slingshot so yeah, you can watch it too on the YouTube channel. And if you came to this point of the video, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to make the channel and make my community grow. And I'm planning on doing this as my full-time job. So if you subscribe and help the channel grow, I would really appreciate it. And now, because if you subscribed, or even if you didn't subscribe, let me tell you one thing. The item called Ricochet increases the bounce on your weapon, right? But bear in mind, <laughs> when you're playing an engineering character, if you take ricochet and you have plus one bounce, actually the uh, damage of your uh, torrents is gonna bounce as well, because you share most of your stats with your torrents. We're gonna like do a full engineering video later, but for this one, let's say we have bounce. If I have a level 1 torrent, my level 1 torrent attack will actually hit two targets if I have bounce. Or if I have pierce, my le it's gonna affect my engineering items as well. So when you're playing characters like, let's say, uh, engineer or entrepreneur with wrenches, uh, you usually just hit one enemy. Like, see, that hits one. If you have pierce or you have bounce on any of these torrents, 
your torrents are actually gonna do two shot like two hits each time they shoot something let's just finish this off and get to the staff menu all right good job buddy ah, HP region. okay and the uh, next one on the line is piercing damage just increases and decreases the damage you do with your second hit after your first shot pierced your target damage against bosses there's one just one item called the silver bullet and giant giant spells but don't care about giant spells it's like yeah not a big deal uh, but if you have a silver bullet it's gonna add 25% chance 25 percent to the damage you do to the bosses and elites if you plan on doing endless always and always buy every single item that gives this you don't necessarily need it to kill the bosses if you have the spare coins buy it if not focus on other things burning speed uh, is a very very specific stat it applies to only elemental weapons such as wand torch sacred sausage taser not the taser if you have like let's say sacred sausage and taser but it's mostly just torch and wand so you see wand does four damage three times as burning damage if you take the uh, uh, take an item to decrease the uh, time between your burns basically enemies are gonna burn faster and they're gonna die faster if you play elemental weapons always and always and always take every single point of burning speed that you see because elemental da elemental damage has a downside from burns that they die slow and you need to kill everything as soon as possible ASAP burning spread is only affected by one item called the snake a snake is a very rare item we're not ever gonna get it here I don't think we're gonna get it oh, whatever you get the idea uh, burning spread increases for example let's say my wand says that it's gonna burn one target if I hit it right so for example mage if I mage starts the game with snake burning spreads to an additional nearby enemy so if I hit something like look at here so see I hit one of them both of them are burning that's burning spread you can have up to three snakes I think so take all of them too because it really really uh, adds to your damage output per second especially 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 if you're planning on playing endless it is a very 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 big combo if you have burning speed and a spread up our next stat is knockback knockback defines how far you're gonna kick away uh, your enemies when you hit them with your weapon you can go negative on it but if you go negative nothing happens but if you go positive on it you're just gonna shoot your enemies uh, backwards on elemental uh, on elemental builds and on engineering builds I prefer to have at least six knockback on any weapon that I'm playing because that's the only way you can get away from mummies and mummies are those armored round uh, little ones that come and just annoy you all the time after wave 13 uh, double material chance there are a couple of items that affect it uh, let's say uh, um, hmm, metal detector or for example the chance on this it's a, it's a very similar matter you can get either hunting trophy or uh, metal detector for it and it basically is the thief dagger for example 50 chance to gain one extra material when you kill an enemy that's just the stat that affects it they are the same in free rolls you can just get it from dangerous bunny it just makes this go to zero for one roll and that's it uh, trees increases the number of trees it, I usually buy trees on all characters especially if they have a little bit of luck so I can just grab crates out of them or food if I don't have HP original lifesteal I just go and grab trees enemies you can have it with gentle aliens on characters such as loud for example loud has 50% more enemies you can only decrease this by 5% with buying white flag but it's no big deal uh, I have a video on YouTube for when we played loud with 150% enemies it doesn't matter that much if you're powerful enough you're gonna take him out and for example characters like like Jack have <coughs> sorry uh, negative 75% enemies so that's basically just what that does uh, I usually prefer to have at least one or two gentle aliens on all of my runs unless I feel like my character is pretty weak 
So take at least one or two gentle aliens. Don't be scared of too many enemies. You can take them. Plus it will give you some damage to deal with them. And here's the tree item that we were just talking about. And no, nothing else. Enemy speed is just enemy speed. You can decrease this by uh, the item called uh, the uh, toots, ugly toots, or by taking the item snail. And one more thing about this. If you have torrent, uh, your torrents and landmines can actually, your structures, can spread sacred sausage too, like the burns. So if you're playing mage by torrents, your torrents are gonna burn enemies with sacred sausage and your snake is gonna spread that fire. That was a pro tip as last thing I'm gonna tell you on this video. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and I'll uh, stream on Twitch every single day almost for six or eight hours. Come say hi, I'll be waiting for you. And next time, I think, I think, I think I'm gonna do a weapons guide and which character is played best on which item. So, see you there.